Sextortion is an epidemic, there's no question, but we really don't hear that much about it, mainly because its victims are usually too embarrassed or ashamed to talk about it publicly. Until now. Today we'll be hearing from a survivor of sextortion. We're going to learn how it started, what happened to them, and most importantly what they did to fix it. Now this person has requested to remain anonymous, and we're going to honor that. Without further ado, here's their story. Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Ken, and this is part two of our exclusive story, Surviving Sextortion. Let's get into it. I'm looking online, trying to find any sort of help for this situation, trying to figure out what I can do, who can help me. I'm Googling phrases I, I never thought I'd Google before, like extortion on Facebook, and um, what do you do when someone has naked pictures of you? And they all kind of came back to a lot of similar uh, results talking about something called sextortion, which I had never in my life heard of before. But apparently it's it's a thing, it's a big deal. It's happening to a lot of people. And the downside is it doesn't seem to be a lot of agencies out there or, or people that can help with this sort of thing. But I did find one place that was able to help me, uh, Digital Forensics. Corporation. Without question, those first couple of searches right after being sextorted are going to be some of the scariest searches you'll ever perform in your life. Uh, you're plugging in words that don't make a ton of sense, you know, blackmail, social media, Facebook, uh, extortion, things like that that typically you would never put together. Uh, and the results you get back can be jarring. Uh, thankfully, DFC does appear at the top of uh, most of those searches, and we are able to then uh, help people and point them in the right direction uh, like we did here. And, you know, I gave them a call. I explained my situation to uh, the person that answered the phone. And they gave me all sorts of uh, information about, you know, what could happen to me if I, if I don't put a stop to this. Uh, they also gave me some pointers on how to deal with it in the meantime. They, they, re they really listened to what was going on and they had, you know, the answers that I needed. They didn't just tell me what I wanted to hear. They, they actually gave me advice and, and I guess comfort, something that I hadn't had, I hadn't felt in you know a while. Yeah, I I remember this case. Um, this person was very nervous, um, and we were able to help him out. Um, I told him that we were available 24/7. Um, but when I was helping him through the situation, uh, we basically got as much information as we possibly could. Um, and the results were uh, the results were fantastic. Uh, we were able to, in the end, calm him down um, and, and make him feel a lot better and comfortable about the situation, uh, and knowing going forward that we were there to help him with this case. But once they took on my case, it was like a night and day difference for me. Um, I went from dealing with this person hundreds of times a day, you know, thinking about it constantly, to being able to put my phone down, close my eyes and take a nap and not worry about it because, you know, DFC was on the case. Yeah, more than anything, just a an ear uh, can be very helpful to people that are going through sextortion. Uh, so when, when we get those calls, the first thing we want to do is try to bring you down to, uh, to a calmer level, to more relaxed level. We want to let you know that everything is going to be okay. We're going to get through this together. Uh, we have all the tools at our disposal to, to get through this. Uh, and you know, that can go a very, very long way, especially when someone feels like it is the worst day of their life. It's our job here at DFC to let you know that it's not, and we're going to take care of this. It is very important to us that our clients are comfortable and relaxed during this entire process, which is why we do take over communication 100%. And when I say that, I mean every text, every email, every Facebook message, whatever it may be, it's coming to us and no longer going to our client. This way they do have peace of mind. They can put their phone down, they can close their laptop, they can shut off their tablet, get back to their regular everyday lives, knowing that the communication that was a burden to them is now in our hands and we're doing everything we can to put an end to this situation and they no longer have to worry. Of course, they're the professionals. I, I, I can only tell you what what the report showed me, but the gist of it was that they, they got into my account. I gave them access to my Facebook account. They went in and, and they, they began to talk to this person, uh, gained some trust, got some, some tracking uh, information from them, and they were able to use uh, all of these uh, 
tools that they have uh, and the software that they use to get a ton of information about the person that was extorting me. Yeah, every client gets a full report once the investigation is completed. Within that report, you're gonna see every text message, every email, every phone call, every single tracking link we used, basically every step we took to get the desired outcome for our client. We do that for a couple of reasons, but the most important reason is just peace of mind so that our clients can see from start to finish everything we did to keep them protected. And then they compiled all of that into, a, a, I guess, a letter and, and sent it to them and let them know like, look, we know who you are, we know where you are, we know what you're doing, and here's why you need to stop. And here's the consequences if you don't. And I think, <laughs> I think that the person that was extorting me got just as scared as I was uh, because it worked. They stopped. They agreed to stop talking to me. They sent uh, TFC proof that all of my content was deleted from their devices, the screen recordings and things like that. I, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Uh, and it, it's something that I've been thinking about nonstop. You know, they gave me this report that had so much uh, detail in it regarding my case. Um, all of the communication, all of the proof, uh, the geolocation information. The thing that really blew my mind was they actually got a, uh, a photo of this person's ID card. And, you know, I thought I was talking to a girl. I wasn't. I was talking just to uh, a guy who happened to be located in uh, Lagos, Nigeria, Africa. Our team at Digital Forensics works around the clock, collecting every piece of evidence we can on every suspect we deal with. One of the main components to our reports are IDs. This is just a small fraction of the thousands we've collected over the years. So getting this ID was pivotal to the case. I knew as soon as we got it, we were going to get the outcome we wanted. I take a lot of pride in being able to help our clients. And when we get these IDs, it's definitely impactful on the case. It helps us get the outcomes we're looking for. And I'm glad we're able to do what we do. Uh, but we, they got his ID and, you know, in that I was able to see his full name, his address, picture of him. You know, everything that's on a standard ID and it it really, really blew my mind to see that they were able to get that information. I, I was in a situation where I thought I was talking to someone totally different, but I guess that just goes to show, you know, how good these, these scammers are and, and how well-rounded they are when it comes to concealing their identities. Yeah, he is 100% right. We do try to get as much information as possible on all of our suspects. Uh, sometimes it's a name, sometimes it's a geolocation, sometimes it's an ID, sometimes it's all of those things and more. Using all of that collected information, we then give the suspect a choice, and that's to either comply with our demands or face further repercussions. When we say comply, we mean delete the content, never speak to our client again, and furthermore, never blackmail anyone ever again. Uh, and ultimately, that worked. Ultimately, I, I wouldn't have been able to do this by myself. Um, I don't know anyone in my life who would be able to do the things that, you know, DFC did for me. And, and it didn't take that long either, you know. It was a change in my life that was desperately needed, and it happened quicker than I, I ever would have expected. I don't know what I would have done had I not, you know, picked up the phone and called DFC for help. It's not always easy to admit that you do need help with a situation, especially something as intimate and as private as extortion. Uh, but we want you to know that you're not alone in this. We, we are here to help you. We have all the answers to all the questions that you may have. And if this is something that you're going through or have gone through and you still haven't quite resolved, get a hold of us. Give us a call, write us an email, get on our website and uh, submit a form. We're, we're definitely able to help you uh, deal with this situation. Uh, now, this story is not quite over. We do have one more part to go, so stay tuned, and um, until then, stay safe out there.